Shalom, it's Izzy, your Hebrew teacher here, and this is Hebrew Chapters with Holy Language Institute. We have reached the last parasha, the last portion in the Torah, the five books of Moses. Uh, as you can see here, it is the 54th, and it is called Vizot Habracha, named after the opening words. We'll uh, learn what those mean in just a moment. Uh, we'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 33, as you can see here. Uh, this chapter is predominantly poetry, just like the last chapter that we read. So we'll see if we'll actually be able to make it through all of it in one session or not. Um, as you know, poetry is written differently than prose. Uh, poetry is written with a wider spectrum of words employed. Often uh, words are used that are uh, a little more rare than usual. And uh, this, this, uh, this section, these poetic blessings that the prophet Moses pronounces over each of the tribes of Israel definitely fits that criteria. Uh, let's pray for a moment and we'll, we'll get started. Uh, thank you, Elohim God, uh, for being the God of Israel. And thank you for being our God also. Uh, thank you for your Torah. It's exciting that we have reached the last parasha before we turn back the clock, hit the, hit the restart button, and uh, begin again. Thank you for the, the poetry in your word, uh, the creative expressions. Thank you for helping us. I pray that you would help us today as we read. I pray that this would be a fun experience, that it would be deeply meaningful. I pray that your Ruach, your spirit, would, would help each one of my students and uh, that you would open our minds to understand uh, the scriptures. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. I pray for ongoing encouragement for every one of my students and that they would truly encounter you through the texts and that we would all find our hearts coming alive as a result. Amen. So we're going to be reading in Deuteronomy 33. Uh, again, this is assuming you have a basic comprehension of Hebrew uh, in terms of uh, your ability to read. If not, you can still follow along and you'll get a lot out of this, but I definitely recommend you go through the 40 Hebrew lessons of Hebrew Quest at holylanguage.com to get started in reading if you haven't already done so. The Zot and this ha bracha uh, is the bracha, the blessing. Asher, that Berach, uh, blessed, Moshe, Moses, Ish, uh, man, the man, Ha Elohim. Uh, literally, this is the God. Uh, it's translated as the man of God, Moses, the man of God, but it literally says Ish, man, Ha Elohim, the God. Uh, usually, in English, we don't talk about, quote, the God. We just talk about God. But in Hebrew, there are times when God is referred to as the God, Ha Elohim. Here you can see that. So anyway, this is the blessing that he blessed. Uh, et, who did he bless? B'nai, the sons of Israel. Israel. Lifnei, uh, before Moto, uh, his moat, his death. Vayomal, uh, root is Amal to say, Vayomal, and he said, and then we have the name of God, spelled Yod, He, Vav, He. Uh, most scholars believe this was originally pronounced Yahweh, and if you read God's name as Yahweh, I welcome you to reverently do that. Uh, I'll be reading God's name as Adonai, which is the Jewish uh, tradition, uh, which means like my master and uh, is translated in English Bibles as the Lord usually. And, you know, there are times when I'm reading the word or praying when I use God's name also. But for these lessons, I, I, uh, I've just been saying Adonai. So anyway, Vayomer. Adonai, Missinai, 
um, from Sinai, which is Sinai, Ba, he came. The Zarach, uh, root Zarach means to shine. Uh, it's usually a reference to the sunrise. For instance, uh, there's a Hebrew phrase for the rising of the sun, which is Mizrach HaShemesh. The uh, sun is the Shemesh. You can hear that there, Mizrach HaShemesh, the rising of the sun. Uh, it's also the root from whence the Hebrew term for the direction east comes. Um, often east in the Hebrew is simply Mizrach. Why? Because it's the direction of the sunrise. Kind of easy to easy to um, connect those two concepts. So anyway, here it says, Vizarach, and he shone, or dawned, Me Seir, uh, from Seir, the Edomite mountain, mountainous area, Lamo, um, to, to him or for him. Hophia, uh, the root there, Yafa, means to radiate, shine brightly. Art scroll translates it as appeared. We'll read that. Uh, let's read that as he radiated. Hophia, Mehal, from uh, Mount Paran. Vata, this is notable. We're beginning to hit. Uh, a kind of poetry in Hebrew that's called parallelism. In, in Hebrew, often you'll use a word in one sentence, and then in the next sentence or line, you will employ a synonym. So you don't use the same word twice. You employ a parallel term. And you, we can see this here. A little earlier it says, uh, Adonai mi Sinai ba. He from Sinai came. Here, then it says v'ata, which is another word for came, v'ata, and it's a, it's a lesser used word, and it's actually quite a fascinating word also because it's spelled aleph, tav, hey. Uh, aleph and tav are the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, the Greek equivalent of those first and last letters. Uh, just in terms of being first and last, would be Alpha and Omega. So if Yeshua, uh, a Hebrew-speaking Jewish rabbi and Messiah, really spoke to his apostle Yohanan, John, in the book of the Apocalypse in Greek, then yes, he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. However, if he spoke to him in Hebrew, which I believe he did, he did have a record of that. Paul says that when Yeshua appeared to him on the way to Damascus, he spoke to him in Hebrew and said, Shaul, Shaul. Um, Saul, Saul, right? Anyway, so if he spoke to Yochanan in Hebrew, he would have said, I am the Aleph and the Tav. And interestingly enough, this little Hebrew word for coming is spelled Aleph, Tav, and then a He on the end, which... Uh, represents often and symbolizes the uh, the spirit, the spiritual dimension, the uh, the supernatural. So anyway, there there's some other interesting things about this word, this little verbal root, um, Aleph Tav. Hey, it also uh, is the root for the Hebrew word for a sign, as in a, a, a physical object representing a spiritual reality, a, a token of, um, of something, for instance. So anyway... Um, that's the, as you can see, this is quite a deep word. I'm trying to unpack a little bit of it for you because it's quite rare and you're not going to encounter it in the Tanakh very often. So I just had to share that secret with you. So, v'ata, and he came, me, rivavo. Thanks for watching this trailer. To get this whole talk in audio or video format, go to holylanguage.com and subscribe. I'll see you there.